Well, and thanks for joining me in my shop. We're going to be testing all those capacitors that I just removed from that radio. Uh, once again, very carefully. And uh, um, we're going to be doing it with the two instruments you see in front, which are uh, the same two I uh, used the first time around, but we'll be just a little more careful with it. And, uh, and we'll see what we get. But first, I have some unfinished business with one of these capacitors. You might remember in the video, I put a clip lead on the and this capacitor, look, it's still on there. This is a day later. And I'm going to be checking for something you might think is a little odd. That's just a voltmeter. There. Now, I've got three more really crummy capacitors. Here they are. And all I'm going to do is just test for voltage on these capacitors. Now, these have been sitting in my junk bin since I removed them from the radio they came from. And that's quite a while. So you would expect the capacitor to be fully discharged, absolutely, no questions asked. But let's just check for voltage on these capacitors here. So here's the first one. Thirteen and dropping. Now, if this was just capacitor charge, and I let go, you would expect it to be at the same voltage it ended at, or lower yet. 11, 10, 9. So I'm trying to convince you that this really is a voltage developed inside the capacitor. So let's try this one here. That's Draper ringing his bell there. Here we go. Started out at 33. It was probably quite a bit higher than that even. Quickly dropped to 17, 16. I didn't say these made good batteries. They aren't very good as a battery. Now we've got down to 13. Now we'll put it back on. 16, 15, 14. Okay, we'll do one more. This one has a special shield lead, but that won't make any difference. We'll just ignore that. Oh my gosh, Draper. Here we go. Okay, so that was over 100 uh, millivolts. That was uh, 0.1 volts there. 78, 50, 39. Once again, it's a lousy battery, but there's no way that voltage was in that ba in that uh, capacitor uh, from the previous time it was charged. So this thing's been sitting in my junk pile, this one probably for months. So I've noticed this repeatedly on old, especially really wrecked up capacitors. So take a look at the at this one in particular. So this one was reading funny when I was testing it on the other two instruments, the two capacitance checkers. And I thought, oh my gosh, it must be another case of a capacitor that's turned into a battery. Now that short's been on there for the longest time. There really can't be any voltage here, even if it has some battery power. It's going to take a little bit of time to build it up. Now let's take a look. Let's take a look. Here we go. Did you see the... 24 that was there for a moment. I'll take it off again. Watch that. Here we go. Okay, no 24 that time. So maybe we'll just leave that sitting there for another minute or two. Uh, the problem with this voltage, uh, if, if it really exists, is it, it can bother you test instruments, I, I'm pretty sure, especially if you're taking an ohmmeter and trying to test these, and it's pushing back with its own voltage, you get some pretty weird resistance readings. Here we go. Watch the meter now. Oops. It likes 0 0.007.
so not much. Now these capacitors all appear to be in pretty good shape that I just took out of this radio. These are almost cream of the crop, really, for vintage capacitors. So that one showed quite a high uh, voltage on it. So that's just what I wanted to demonstrate at this point. This phenomenon, I don't think I've read about it anywhere on the internet. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen it commented on. So, that's the story there. And we'll get on with the actual capacitor test protocol. Well, hi, and uh, I th thanks for uh, joining me here in my shop. I'm going to be doing, doing a whole bunch of capacitor testing. All the uh, capacitors that I removed from the radio I'm going to retest because my first time through using these various testers, uh, this one and this one, um, the results weren't particularly consistent. So I'm going to do it again and uh, and see what we come up with. And the uh, first thing I'm going to do is, uh, well, first I'm going to show you this. Now there's all the values written down on the page here from the previous test. So I've written down the actual rating of the capacitor, what it's supposed to be, what the Heathkit uh, C3 uh, has done, and what the MT 5210 has uh, done. That's the digital meter. That's just the AVC voltage written there. And a little bit about leakage. So I'm going to do this again, do a little more carefully, and do a couple things to um, try to ensure that the test is valid. So first thing I'm going to do is a little bit crazy. I'm going to try to measure the uh, voltage that might exist in any of these capacitors. Here, here they all are. They're in this little tray here, lined up in the same order that they are on the page here. So I should be able to do things fairly quickly. And, uh, now, th this voltage thing. Um, okay, so there is a voltage that appears in capacitors called, uh, well, it comes from the uh, uh, dielectric material inside the capacitor. Uh, you might think of the charges as being on the plates. But there's also something going on in the dielectric, uh, which plays a huge role in the charge that uh, can be uh, can be put on the plates or will be put on the plates of a capacitor. And the dielectric material in these capacitors is basically paper soaked in uh, oil or wax or something of that sort. And uh, what happens is the uh, under electrical stress when you charge up the capacitor, uh, some of the molecules kind of that rotate or are displaced slightly. Uh, they don't really go anywhere any distance, but like a spring being stretched, they're pushed into a new position due to the electrical charges on the plates around them. Then when you discharge the, the uh, metal plates, in this case it's a foil, probably just aluminum, aluminum foil, when you discharge it by shorting out the leads of the capacitor, um, these twisted, uh, strained, maybe stressed is a better word, stressed molecules or atoms or whatever it is that's happening begins to relax back and because they're no longer being pushed by the electric field and as they relax back a charge imbalance occurs uh, in the dielectric and it appears on the plates and can be measured on a voltmeter. Now, this is a very common, commonly known, commonly understand effect understood effect with capacitors and that's what makes a big capacitor, uh, let's say an electrolytic capacitor, a little bit, this is not electrolytic by the way, none of these are, but if you look at a, a big capacitor and charge it up, especially if you charge it and keep it on charge for quite a while, you can then remove it from the supply, you can briefly short circuit it, maybe put a clip lead on for two or three seconds, something like that, maybe even see a little bang of current jump out of the capacitor looks pretty convincing that it's discharged. I'll then remove the short from the leads a few moments later. You can hook up your voltmeter and you'll see a voltage. Sometimes you'll see it rising, in fact, in the capacitor. And this is this relaxation voltage uh, showing up. Well, I'm not interested in that. What I'm interested in is another effect, I think, that's going on in the oldest, most beat-up capacitors where because moisture has gotten into the capacitor there's a little bit of a galvanic voltage that develops between the two uh, 
plates or foils inside the capacitor. Perhaps it's between the foil and the wire lead coming in because you need a couple different types of metal to generate a voltage. So it's a, essentially a battery is what I'm talking about. And I've encountered this in a number of capacitors along the way. It's all been kind of ad hoc and not very scientific at all, as if anything scientific ever goes on in my shop. And, but I've just become very, very curious about this effect because I think it's another way to detect a really beat up capacitor. And you will have seen in the video uh, segment just gone by that uh, I can read voltages on capacitors that have been really thoroughly discharged. If you do hook up a short on a capacitor, you can drain out the dielectric charge completely. So when you hook up a voltmeter, you see a zero. Now let's just see if I'm telling the truth. So I'm going to take a, a good brand new capacitor here. going to look on the voltmeter and this is a brand new capacitor. I don't think it's been charged at any time. I don't really know. We're just going to read the voltage if there is one. If there's a voltage here, I'm in hot water. Zero. So, you know, that's what you would expect. A zero on a fully discharged capacitor and the charge is not coming back on its own. Okay? But that's not what I'm talking about in terms of these old beat up capacitors. When you do that test after thoroughly discharging them you can find, once again, a voltage, a very, very small voltage in most cases, not always. So let's just go through these fairly quickly. I'm just going to verify that each one of these has no voltage on it. So these are the re re uh, capacitors that came out of the radio. Okay, so this would be C1.005. Yeah, it looks like a zero, but you did see there was a slight voltage there which disappeared under the load of the meter. Now, my meter is a 10 mega ohm input. It's not much of a load. So these capacitors, if they do operate like batteries, they are not much of a battery. They can't produce much current. Let's try this one. The same sort of thing. You saw a very slight voltage for a moment. It's trying to hang on at 0.01. But it can't, okay? That's not the dramatic effect I'm actually looking for. And, and I, frankly, I don't expect it. And now look at this guy. Now the thing about this voltage, unlike the dielectric voltage, is if I leave my meter connected here long enough, this will come down to a certain level, curve off, you know, asymptotically to a particular voltage. Now this looks like it might make it to zero. Now, I'm not going to sit here and hold this for a long time. It's a very, very low voltage anyway. So none of, none of these capacitors appear to be moisture ridden. That's really, see yeah, there's a voltage on this one too. Now you, you might want to argue with me that it's just dielectric uh, voltage reappearing even though the capacitors have been sitting here. I did put them on testers, I did put voltage on them, and maybe this is just the remnants of it. You have to imagine how low is that going to go. Because I'm not going to wait long enough to find out. Because as I said before, I really don't think these capacitors are that bad in this respect. But I thought it was worth going through them all. Okay. This one is uh, C14. This now, a couple other places for voltage to appear in a situation like this. One is uh, thermal. Thermal. Oh, look at that. Thermal. Uh, I can't think of the proper term. Uh, like thermocouple type voltage. That's possible. See, that's slowing right down. Again, these are all pretty small voltages, but uh, and another one, once again. Now, these capacitors have been sitting here on my bench uh, overnight. Hard to say whether that's a galvanic type 
voltage pushing that. But I can't, I, uh, as you saw in the other video, really beat up capacitors do exhibit a voltage which will reach a steady state and just power the voltmeter on forever. Here's a brand new capacitor. Might as well give it a shot. Zero, dead zero, which is kind of what you expect. So there we go. So I, the reason I did that was I wanted to discover if any of these capacitors had a really significant voltage in them, whatever the cost. And uh, I think the answer is no. Uh, again, they don't look like moisture-ridden capacitors to me. They don't look terribly beat up. Now, I'm going to get ready here to repeat the capacitor test and uh, I'm going to do it right in order. I'm going to make some notes on it as we go and uh, we'll, we'll see how this turns out. Okay, I think I'm just letting this uh, warm up. I'm sure it's ready to go now. I'm ready to go. So the first one, C1.005, measure it on here. Point zero zero seven. I think if I Zero zero six seven. Last time I got zero zero seven five. There we go. Now this is a point. Zero zero five. Zero, zero five. So it's right at the end of the. Oh, something we want to do with the C3 Heath kit is verify the internal uh, capacitance and the leads. The way I have the leads laying here on the bench. Okay, so with nothing connected, we can actually just measure it using the instrument. Okay. Bear with me one moment. There's a good look at the eye on here as I adjust it. Now, the object of this instrument is to adjust it until the eye is open maximum. That would be maximum. And so what are we reading here on this instrument? We are reading Let's see, what scale are we on? We're on the oh, we're on a high scale here. That doesn't make sense. Let's try this again. Well, it's right at the bottom of the scale here. Point we're less than point zero 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 one. Uh, let's see, that would be uh, too much for my brain in the morning here. 10 picofarads. So we're in the range of 10 picofarads down here, which has nothing to do with the uh, um, type or the size of the capacitors that we're testing. We're way beyond a few picofarads from the leads here. So that just verifies that. 
situation. Now, let's go and test this capacitor here. Get point zero zero just above point zero zero five, a little bit bigger than point zero zero five. Okay, so let me write that in the point zero zero. Okay, last time I did this it was 0 0.0075. Maybe I'll call that 0 0.006. Okay, so the two instruments read pretty similar, 0 0.006 and 0 0.0067. I can't be that precise with this one. And this guy offers the precision. Okay, so that's the end of uh, the first capacitor. Let's go on to the next one. This one is a point zero zero one. Point zero zero one with a little more precision. 0, 0, 0.0013. 0, 0, 0.0013 is exactly the same reading that I got last time I tested this capacitor with that with that meter. Okay, I will put it on the C3. The C3. You know, that's an unfortunate name for a capacitor checker. So I kept writing C3 in my notes, thinking it was capacitor number 3, and I actually meant the Heathkit C3. <laughs> so, 0 0.001 should be somewhere up around here. Okay. There we go. And what do we get? almost exactly 0 0.001. Now last time, for some reason, I got 0 0.002. But you know what? I could have been reading the instrument wrong, making lots of mistakes. That's why I wanted to do this again more carefully. Okay. So that's the end of that guy. Now we'll go on. This is C9.2. Last time I got 0.27, this time 0.26. Okay, back over to this guy here. Point 0.2 on this scale. Point two is going to be somewhere around here. Now well, it's way up here. Right there. And the reading is point five. This starts at 0.001. It's a very large scale. 0 0.001, 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 0 0.5. So I'm getting 0.5 on there. That's interesting. Last time it was 0.45. They're really the same reading. 
So on this meter I'm getting 0.26, and on this one I'm getting 0.5 on a capacitor that's supposed to be 0.2. Okay, th this view might make things a little easier. I have to back up the cart a little bit and go back to the first two capacitors and do the leakage test, which I, which I overlooked. So I have uh, C1 connected again here, and we'll flip this over to leakage. start here. Now, see how fast that closed and opened? It means it's very good at 25 volts. 150. See a little slower? Still good. 250. Uh, okay, starting to show some leakage. 350. Really not even opening. So what should I record here? I should record the highest good voltage, which was 150. Okay, go on to the next one. This is C2. This is 350. There's a very good capacitor. The top voltage this will test at 450. So this capacitor is testing uh, very good. Interestingly enough, the meter readings, the capacitance readings, are accurate. So not leaking, getting an accurate result from uh, the meter. And this is what I think I'm going to discover, that leaky capacitors don't test well at all. Okay, we'll put on this fat guy here. Now, of course, this test is applying a high voltage to the capacitor. It is charging it up. It is going to charge the dielectric a bit. It does, when you release the control, put a short across the capacitor to discharge it, but only as long as you keep the leads on but that will work so here we go 25 it's already slow at 25 volts but it made it okay 150 Maybe being bigger capacitor it might just go a little slower during this test Two, 250 here we go Well, back to 25 here. I would rate that very poor, very high leakage capacitor. Um, you know, a little bit of leakage may not hurt in some applications in the radio, maybe where there's not a large DC voltage across the uh, capacitor. Um, but, interestingly enough, high leakage and a very uh, inflated capacitance reading from the uh, Heath kit. And uh, a not quite so bad reading coming from the uh, digital meter, but the problem of course is, you know, what's right? I, I'm a little like, I'm a little like the guy with two watches. Never knows what time it is. It's kind of the situation here. You know, I, I've often wondered, to be honest with you, when I say go and get a blood test, and uh, you get the test results. And I think, gee, did, did they do three samples? Did, did they run the test three times over? Did they have three different people perform the test? Did, uh, or did they just do the test once and whatever number they got is the one they're serving up to you? You know, it's always made me nervous in medical testing. I don't know what the answers are to that. But I know from my own experience, uh, reproducibility of tests is not as easy as people might think. Okay. So let's go on to the next next one here. This would be C10.05. Okay, so last time I read 
crazy values on this capacitor. I read 0.14 on this meter. Now I'm reading 0.09, basically. Why, uh, why the big difference from the last time around? Okay, point oh eight nine. Just writing that down. Now we'll switch to the other tester. Now you might notice there's another control here called power factor. Uh, power factor measurement has to do with uh, dissipation, uh, heat loss in the dielectric uh, under alternating current uh, operation, and. Uh, I can't use this feature on these small capacitors. The uh, capacitor tester disables this feature, uh, except on the highest settings um, for large capacitors. And we're not doing any large ones here at all. So can't fill around with that control. Now, what are we going to get here? What am I doing? OK, 0 0.05. Let's get back over here. 105 would be there in that range. So a little wiggle there. Hmm. Now those two things you can't you can't see it right now, but they're actually overlapping, and that's why you're getting the extra bright band at the bottom. So as I shrink the extra bright band, I'm in effect opening the gap. It just hasn't reached the point of passing the uh, overlap. So that would be the reading, but pretty suspicious already. And on here, uh, that would be 0.1, something like 0.15, something like 0.15. second here. I must have some capacitors mixed up in my, or I've mixed up my chart a little bit. No, I guess not. Hmm. Maybe I wrote some readings down incorrectly before. So this is supposed to be, this is a 0 0.05 C10 before I read point yeah, 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 yeah. What have I done here? This is what happens when I'm talking and doing these videos. I'm thinking about too many things at the same time. Uh, it doesn't take much anymore for that to happen. So here we got 0 0.1, 0 0.15, I would make it. Last time I got 0 0.2. Now this is supposed to be a 0 0.05 capacitor. Uh, it's reading you know, four times its rating. digital one here. Of course, these two instruments use totally different techniques to derive the capacitance, which is what, what makes them so interesting to use. So we're getting a 0 0.01 here. No, 0 0.09. Okay, radically different reading from the two meters. And if you only have one meter, you, you, you'd never, there'd be nothing to make you suspicious of what's going on here. I think we're going to find this is a very leaky capacitor. Okay, 25 volt leak test. Here we go. Look at that. Even at 25 volts, this thing is leaking. 25 volts. No use testing it any higher. So this is a real bad capacitor. Although this instrument's very sensitive for leakage. It's not telling us how many microamps it's, it's reading, but it's down in that range. I think I read somewhere, as some people think it's a little too sensitive. Okay, so now we're on to, I'm not too confused, 0.005 C12. Last time, 
got 0 0.0069 this time 0 0.065 0 0 0.0065 a little high it's supposed to be 0 0.005 Okay, let's go hunting for the the opening. Here it is here. Again, it's not opening very wide, is it? So, uh, point zero zero five. Zero seven, about point zero eight. I would make this out to be because we can use the scale right here. Point zero seven five. Zero zero point zero zero seven five. A little bit high, also. So point zero zero six five on this guy. 0075 on that. Now we'll take a look at the leakage. How leaky is this guy? Good on 25. Good on 150. Uh, okay, 250 starting to show some. 350. We'll stop there. 350. So it's pretty good. Now the next one is uh, C14. This was a real important capacitor in the radio. This one uh, is, was blocking B plus from reaching the grid of the output tube. This is a very important capacitor. 0.01. Point zero one eight. That's exactly what I read last time with this. Point zero one eight. For some reason, I did not record the uh, C three reading last time. Point zero oh one. Okay. Let's go hunting for the. Something kind of going on there, but I don't know what it is. No reading. I wouldn't want this capacitor to be leaky, considering how it was used in the radio, uh, because a small leak will charge up the grid uh, positive, uh, or, or more positive, on the output tube and increase the current flow through the output tube. Uh, eventually, you cut it right off. It gets high enough um, that it can damage the output tube from it overheating from too much current going through it. So I'm not getting any reading here. Is that because I'm on the wrong scale? So 0 0.01 is what it is. Now, now this this shouldn't. This is just capacitance from the uh, leads and stuff like that, so I'm not really getting a... Now, what is that? I'm on the high scale now, 0.1 to 50. I'm kind of off the scale down here. It's just an effect of the uh, meter itself, the instrument itself. So, uh, no reading. No reading. 
Well, did I say I didn't write down the reading? I did. The last time the reading I wrote down was no reading. So, again, no reading. So, what's going on with this capacitor then? 25. Get Shows good. Boop. Okay, 150 volts, not working good. So, 25 volts. So it's supposed to read 0 0.01. On the digital, it's 0 0.018. And on the uh, heat kit, it won't read it. Let's set the heat kit to 0 0.01. Okay, 0 0.01 is going to be in this range. That's 0.5. Point 0.1, that's point zero 0.05, point zero 0.02, point zero 0.01. So that, that little thing here, I don't know if you can even see that on the, yeah, you can kind of see it. So this would come out as a point zero 0.02, with the eye not opening, which is close to what the other meter is reading, point zero 0.018. Yet the leakage, yeah, the leakage on here was okay at 25. Already bad news at 150. Wow, so it's, this is good that we got this capacitor out of this radio. Absolutely. This was probably causing problems. The, the thing about the coupling capacitor to the output tube, to the grid of the output tube, is if it's a little bit leaky, uh, the radio may sound just fine. Meanwhile, the output tube is running unnecessarily hot and you're you're literally wearing it out okay and, and you're drawing more current through the radio circuits and uh, from the if there's a transformer from the uh, transformer all around here you're giving your radio a hard time so here we are now on C15 over here point 039, that's exactly what it read last time, 039. Okay, and this is supposed to be a 0 0.03, kind of an odd number. 0 0.03 would be uh, right around here. There it is. Again, it's not opening very much. So 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.045, I would make that out to be. And last time I read 0 0.045, very same thing. Now we'll take a look at the leakage on here. 25 volts, here's 150. So, very high leakage. Very high leakage on a very sensitive instrument. And now we're down to the last, the last one. This one is a 0.02. Okay, so on the digital meter, point oh 0.018. It's exactly the same as the last time. Point oh 0.02 is going to be in here. Point oh 0.02 should be right up in here. Look at that, it's coming out. Correct. It's not opening fully though. It's bang on. It's right on. 0 0.02. Same reading as last time. Okay, and on the leakage side of things, 
25. Looks good. 150 is okay. 250, it's hanging in there. 350. Well, this is not bad. So I'm going to call that a 350 because it certainly stands out as a much better stands out as a much better stand upper now just for the sake of sanity here's that, that brand new capacitor again let's hook it up here point oh one right on the money dead on point oh one hook it up here Point oh one. Point oh one's back this way. Here it is, right in here. Right there. Whoops, I bumped it. That's right near the point oh one. It's just a hair over point oh one on this meter. So this the standard in my notes here 0.01 reading 0.01 digital 0.01 I don't know 0.011 1. I don't know what that is now we'll give it the high voltage treatment here put that over there so it's a little farther from my hand there we go see how fast that was 150, 250, this is a 600 volt capacitor, 350, see how fast it was, 450, just about the same speed, so there's what a good capacitor should test like, so what am I learning from all this, I'm learning that a capacitor that has become leaky, um, probably due to moisture getting into it a paper wax capacitor that's become leaky is uh, is not going to test properly on the tester here when it comes to its capacitance and the digital meter is going to be closer it's going to be maybe 30 40 percent high uh, you know gee what is its actual capacitance that's oh, an interesting question interesting question because perhaps the condition of the capacitor is fooling these instruments entirely and maybe the capacitance is actually very very low but because of the way they operate um, a leaky capacitor looks like one with a lot of capacity and these instruments are fooled uh, fooled by that so it, it, in a sense the only valid test is this leak leakage test is the only one that's going to separate the, uh, the men from the boys, so to speak. And in some cases, a leaky capacitor is not going to cause much trouble uh, in the radio because there's no and there's not a, a lot of voltage stress across it. But when tested on an instrument, the same leakiness. Uh, we'll throw the readings off. So I could easily be pulling out capacitors, testing them for capacitance with this meter, seeing them all just with vast amounts of capacity, even well over their original rating. Meanwhile, really, it's the leakage in the capacitor that's throwing the instrument off. I think that's the lesson here. I think, uh, I think that's an important lesson. For doing any of these tests, so it's kind of all about how leaky is this capa these capacitors. Now the ones that tested really poor. Hey, let's do one more thing. Let's bring back the ohm meter. You know, not everybody has this kind of equipment. I, I just acquired it myself very recently. Um, I've been flying along with nothing more than a multimeter. And a lot of you are. If you're trying to do any of this kind of work, you, you might only have a multimeter at your disposal. 
Let's pick a real leaky capacitor here. Take this big, big one here. And I'm going to measure the resistance of it. I'm on the 2 meg, let's go higher. 20 meg, 20 meg scale. Well, first, see, it's a negative reading from the residual voltage, so. Also, the meter can only deliver so much current. It takes a while to charge the capacitor up. It's up over 10. Bingo, over 20, 20 mega ohms on this meter. Digital meter. I'm pretty sure it's using a DC voltage to do that test. DC current. Now, this guy can read resistance. Let's just give him a go. It's a capacitor checker, so maybe, maybe he's reading resistance. Maybe with an AC voltage. Let's, let's see what kind of difference we get here. I haven't, I haven't tried the resistance part of this bridge. This around to R and R times 100. Okay, so let's go R and the R scale is 50. I'm not even sure. Let's let's get it going here. Figure out how it works as we go. Okay, no balancing of the bridge there. Maybe I'm not using the meter right. I mean, yeah, it must be. It must you must have to turn this dial here. Well, it's not showing anything, is it? And the top scale, I think this is. Uh, you know, I'm not sure now. It doesn't really say. It just says R100. Uh, it's pretty confusing. 100 times 100, so that's 10k. 10k, 50k, 100k, all the way on up. I think I got it totally wrong. In any case, I can't get a reading off of here. That's a little disappointing. I better teach myself a lesson here. Grab a resistor, brown, black, green. off scale there. What do we get? We get on the R 10 times a hundred. That's a thousand. That's a megal. Mysteries never cease. If that's a mega ohm, this doesn't read very high. I'll have to look back at the manual and see what the range is, because I, I thought this read quite high, 50 mega ohms or something like that. Anyway, that's the end of that little experiment there. I hope you found that interesting. I certainly did. It's taught me a lot about my instruments taught me a lot about testing
capacitors that are in a state not really good enough to be tested even except by this leakage test so I think that's going to become my uh, my go-to test for capacitors is how leaky is it on this on this checker great well thanks a lot for watching and uh, we'll get back to the radio now